Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome today to the start of my F1 Road to Glory in 2021. And as you can see, we're going to be taking on this mammoth challenge with a juggernaut team that is Scuderia for... Oh, oh. It's only been 10 seconds and the entire video has actually had its own failure. We are actually on the ropes with this team, I'm not going to lie. But yes, we're going to be taking on a Road to Glory with Ferrari with a 2021 mod. And so with that, here is our 2021 challenger, that Ferrari livery with that... Uh, oh, there's no other way to really put it. Interesting or, or gopping or uh, outrageous, unnecessary... Many, many words can describe that green Mission Winnow logo. But uh, yeah, the Mission Winnow liveried Ferrari car. It's definitely going to be pronounced Mission Winno, I want to say. It's definitely not Mission Winnow, because we ain't going to be winning squat in this team. Yeah, there she is in all her glory. It is the technically 2021 Ferrari livery on the FOM chassis, but obviously if you know, if you're in the know-how of how F1 mods work on the F1 game, obviously to get certain liveries, you have to use certain different chassis of the car. But to all extents and purposes, let's be real, from, from any sort of distance, you're going to pick out that green Mission Winno logo and know what car that is. Before we delve into the rest of this world of 2021, let's, uh, let's, you know, let's assess our team here. Let's pay homage to the highlights and the best bits of Ferrari's season from last year. Yeah, okay, cool. Moving on then. So, our brand new team is Charles Leclerc. Obviously, he's going to be our teammate in this series. Unlike previous Road to Glories, we'll be, we will be driving as a driver, and we will be driving as Carlos Sainz on the other side of the garage, the new man on the block. So, very much like me stepping into the Ferrari as a new man, I thought we'd go as the new man at the Scuderia. And, uh, well, uh, to be honest, also at the same time, Leclerc's AI is going to be better than the AI that Sainz would have been. Uh, so that's also just going to be an added bonus of maybe he can actually do something of worthwhile in in this car. But probably not actually just actually saying that louder. But you know a man can dream. A man can dream. Operationally we know, you know, it, it's it, it's a little bit ropey at times. This was live scenes of the fire up before pre-season testing actually back at Maranello. Press the button. <laughs> You can see things were going well. But those niggling foibles aside, the team made it to Bahrain. Pre-season testing was pretty damn decent. And you know, there's a lot of promise for this team. So let's look at the highlights here of Leclerc. In practice, this is. Practice 2, to be exact. Obviously, the night sky has come to secure now. The engineers were actually a bit afraid that uh, th that would actually affect the race performance of, of the car via photosynthesis. But uh, thankfully, not the case. I think we should be fine. And it's important to get these race simulations in. You know, we need a bulletproof car. And we really need to get the laps in to get that crucial, crucial... De oh, what the... So, mechanical issue for Charles Leclerc. Um... Uh. Okay, so moving on there. Let's look at uh, something over here, please. Right, moving on from that absolute calamity and disaster. It's time to make up for it. It's time to step up. It's go time. It's qualifying for the Bahrain Grand Prix. One shot, as per usual, short and snappy here in the Road to Glory series. And here we are, barreling down into Turn 1. Already losing time in a straight line to the Mercedes car and missing that apex beautifully. Can we catch the next one? Yes, we can. But on the exit, not too great. And as it stands at the moment, uh, well, we're in P19. So, uh... Things are going well. Things are going well. Maybe we can gain some more time in the corners. This car is pretty okay in the mid apex. We've worked hard from 2020 to make the car a bit more stable in the corners and try and stop that infamous spinning that Sebastian was always used to. And uh, we are, to be fair to uh, ourselves and the car, gaining some time. Bit of oversteer in the last sector. We're uh, on the teetering edge of the top 10 shooter. I don't know where Charles is at the moment, but here we are now into the last corner. Really chuck it in up into P6 now. Almost getting a nosebleed being that high in the Ferrari, but then back down to P10, 11, across the line. Is it going to be? What is it going to be? Is it actually? It's, a, it's actually P11. Well... Well, instead of landing ourselves in the top 10, I think my engineer's just alongside the circuit looking like this. Two minutes dead. <laughs> but you know what? You can't win them all unless you're Mercedes or Verstappen. So we move on to the race. Now, historically, this is where we can do the business. We may qualify down the order, but the race, it's manic chaos, all the other superlatives that I've forgotten about. Um, and that's where we can make the difference. And, you know, the rub of the green may go our way. And, we you know, we can pray to the F1 gods 
and to the other teams, really, for some charity, you know. It may be a different car in this year's Road to Glory series, but we're still an organization that really benefits from a lot of charity. We, you know, we're, we, you know, we're in need, really. Uh, we, we haven't rolled out the adverts quite yet. We haven't done those adverts where we kind of ask for a £1 donation. We're not quite at that level yet, but maybe later in the series we might get to that. But I feel like off the bat, the teams might be a little bit conscious of the fact that we are over here, you know, starving ourselves of, of aerodynamics, drag reduction, engineering prowess, many things. But here we are then at the strategy screen, and I'm actually quite surprised there is any strategy at all, to be honest. I'm actually, I'm quite impressed. There's actually some numbers. There's, it looks like to be some calculations that have been done about tyre wear life and uh, delta tides, all looking rather, rather nice, because usually, usually I'm expecting a, a strategy screen that looks like this. So with an actual plan in place, I'm actually quietly confident about this one from P11. Come on, with a good start, we could actually get some decent points. Here we go then, the first round. Five red lights are out. And we're on the way for the Bahrain Grand Prix in this F1 Road to Glory in 2021. It's a good start from us there versus Gasly. Uh, he's going to squeeze us a bit into turn one, though. So we have to actually go to the outside and try and find some room as we actually make some contact from behind. And with that, we're down to P13. We're side by side with the Williams of George Russell. My word, we really are doing a Road to Glory, aren't we? But we put up a good fight to turn two. We've got back past him. And now we're looking ahead of us at the Aston Martin of Sebastian Vettel. And also Pierre Gasly, the man who actually fought to the outside at turn one and kind of cause that backward spiral. Can we try and send one through through the corners? You can clearly see we do actually have a decent enough car. Gasly a bit slow and we managed to try and dance our way around the outside, but he's going to have the grip there. We go for a little cut back in, try and straight up the car a bit faster. Doesn't quite work, but we're going to stick with him and see if we can get him on the next straight. Of course, no DRS to aid us. So let's see how uh, quick this Ferrari engine is then versus the Honda using some ERS, of course, and abuse using it a little bit too much probably at the early stages of this Grand Prix. You have to remember, we're going to have to watch out for that, especially in the Ferrari. We may have a new improved engine, but I'm pretty sure the ERS energy store is pretty much the same as a Duracell battery at times, I think. But we've made it work. We've got the overtake done around the outside. Really beautiful little move there. And we're up into P10. And it's very depressing that I sound that excited about getting P10 in a Ferrari. Lap two though, chasing after Sebastian Vettel and the Aston Martin, then the man we tried to overtake into turn one, couldn't quite do it there. Ahead of him, you've got Esmen Ocon on the Alpine car, and then Leclerc, our teammate, yellow flags behind. We're closing up to Vettel though, and we've got a good run. Russell out the Grand Prix, and the virtual safety car has been called out at the exact moment we we're about to overtake Vettel. We had a great run through that right-hander. I could sense the move imminently at the last. This is on their fire. This is blatant tactics from the FI to stop us overtaking. They want to make this show better. They're not ready for a Ferrari comeback. They didn't want us to overtake Vettel. And they just deployed the virtual safety car at the exact time we were going to overtake him. Oh, I don't think that's a coincidence, okay? That Williams car could have parked up somewhere else. It's Bahrain. There's a lot of runoff. We were so close behind Vettel that I think we can actually even be side by side with him on this restart. The virtual safety car is ending. And look at this. We're literally level with him. That's how close we were to make an overtake. And so here we are then, green flags, and we're trying to get the power down around the outside. This is very tetchy. We're racing the very man we replaced in this car, of course, as we're driving as Carlos Sainz. And there's a bit of contact made there. And Vettel gets the elbows out, and the rear end squirms it. Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh. So, something broke on our car. Did you see that? There was a bit of car. So, something definitely came off our car. I think the back end of this car has been made with print stick at times. But, um... Uh, that's also, that, that rear end camera, I've, I've just remembered we have that green sticker on the engine car. I don't think I want to look backwards anymore in this series. So much like the ethos of this entire series, we're just going to be looking forwards. Forward thinking, positivity here in the cockpit. We're still P10, but we've got DRS. And... and and it's doing nothing. Where is this? Is this rear wing even working? What is that slot in the rear wing even doing at this point? We gain no time on Sebastian in a straight line. We're having to make a big old dive down the inside to actually try and get side by side with him. And we make a swooping move around the outside of turn two. And we've, 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 we've actually overtaken someone on merit, on actual pace. Come on, come on. Oh, this is exciting. This is genuinely exciting racing with James May. This is it. This is genuinely the start. This is the start of the road to glory. From here on out, it's only on the... Oh, 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 okay. Um, 
We may have half spun it there. And, and, and Sebastian's got back past us. Well, um... But more thrilling racing on, on our hands then, surely, because we've got to re-overtake the man now. But whilst that was going on then, let's give you a quick update of the entire rundown. Lewis Hamilton somehow still leads this Grand Prix with Bottas in second. Not too sure how they haven't gone off somewhere with that rear end stability being an issue from testing. We've got Fernando bloody Alonso, that is. Um, no, your eyes are not deceiving you. Alonso in the Alpine is in third, being chased after Max Verstappen. And there we just saw Sergio Perez overtake Lando Norris to get up into what is a P5 then as a yes, Verstappen in P4 but Alonso doing absolute bits in the Alpine car and you can see Leclerc is not too far off Lando Norris though and then Ocon behind so you can see the potential of the car is there. We just as an individual maybe just lack a bit of potential ourselves but we'll keep digging deep. We've got our head down lap number 5 though. We're going to box in this lap following that kind of half spin. Clearly the rear tyres are a little bit cooked. I mean they don't look too bad in the heads up display but on, in a 25% race, 5 laps is a lot around the Bahrain Grand Prix. So we're going to come in. I re oh my god. I was about to say we're going to come in, get a beautiful undercut, and that's going to really set us off for the rest of the race. But we've only gone and got a five second penalty for speeding in the, speeding in the pit lane. A Ferrari speeding anywhere in Formula 1 these days. Is that even legal? We're pushing on then through this race onto lap number seven. Purple R Sector and the fresher mediums are working a treat because there's Vettel then on the right hand side and we're fully past him. We're catching up to Lando Norris and remember Leclerc was not too far off so this undercut strategy has honestly worked absolute wonders and I think we'll continue to on to the next lap. And you know what? You know who I have to thank? I want to thank me. <laughs> I want to thank me for believing in me. I want to thank me for doing all this hard work. I want to thank me for having no days off. And I want to thank me for the undercut strategy because here we are then on lap number eight. We are flying 1.7 seconds taken out of our personal best lap time. And here we are then into turn one side by side with Leclerc, our teammate. Round the outside we go and we pinch him and we've overtaken him. And Octo Alto Ocon as well in the Alpine. We've got three cars for one with a simple undercut strategy there, noticing the tyre wear pretty high on the soft tyres of Bahrain. Leclerc comes back at us though, we lock up on the right hand side and he's down the inside, he's got his nose in the middle but we're going to squeeze him out and hold position for now. The only issue though being ahead of him and being in the situation is we didn't help ourselves with the 5 second penalty and we also need to save fuel, we're very much in the red on fuel and we're not going to make it to the end if we're not careful. So in this stage where we're in lean mixture trying to save that fuel, we may as well let Leclerc through to be honest because we've got the five second penalty so he's going to finish ahead of us if he's in that position anyway so I'm, I'd rather be a team player early doors you know it's episode one we've got to leave the civil war to at least later to about like episode 10 I would say but in letting Leclerc through I didn't actually realize how quick Ocon was in the Alpine car and he's coming at us at a rate of not and he sails past us with DRS open and us in lean mixture at the start he actually goes down the inside of Leclerc as well how quick is that Alpine car I think so I think we need to check the mod I think we need to check I think the Alpines are a bit too quick at the moment but Ocon Tries to go around the outside, he does, and Leclerc is floundering. We've let this guy past, and now we're going to re-overtake him, the guy. So, so, what is going on, man? Stop wasting the opportunities we've just given you. We re-overtake him, and uh, well, I don't know how much longer we can hold this. The rear end is twitching already as the tyre wear affects the medium tyres. It's what happens in a 25% race uh, with such a small tyre scale. But we're going to send one down the inside of Ocon, and how have we not made contact? Massive dive bomb, and Ocon switchbacks us. We're now on the inside, we're going to squeeze him out. And what you're just witnessing there is the classic Ferrari squeeze out. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, to textbook, textbook stuff. You squeeze, get the elbow right out. Know that you're Ferrari. So the FIA are going to turn a blind eye to it. Bob's your uncle and it's no bother. So Ocon's off circuit. He's lost about five positions. Uh, my work is done. And there's actually still plenty to do in this race, so we're going to use Leclerc as a bit of a horse and carriage because Vettel is still within five seconds of us. So we need to watch out for that. We need to use Leclerc to pull ourselves and pull that five-second gap. Meanwhile, at the moment, out in the front, he's still got the two Mercedes cars. One, two, Hamilton in the lead. Bottas second. Alonso is still flying high in third place in the Alpine car, but he's very much under pressure from the Red Bull. I think that's uh, of Max Verstappen. I think of Perez ahead of Lando Norris. But looking back at Hamilton, then dominating this one. Where are those issues Mercedes had in pre-season testing? Oh my god! 
One timing, the rear end steps out. Hamilton, he's had a massive wobble and he's off circuit. He's in the gravel. He's going to come back on circuit. He's still in this race, but he's been overtaken by at least four or five cars there, I think, as he's still going slow. And Bottas now in the lead of this Grand Prix. And Bottas has gone wide. He's driven straight off the circuit and he's parked it up. What is he doing? Does he think the race is over? I think that shows a lot of Bottas' character, if anything. He's just given up with the race. And so Fernando, Fernando Alonso, the Matador, he's in the lead of this Bahrain Grand Prix in the Alpine. Sergio Perez is in second place ahead of Max Verstappen. Lando Norris ahead of Lewis Hamilton, who's back racing once again. But Bottas completely out of this one, it looks like, because he just parked up for some reason. But it's come to ruse. Those pre-season niggles, the rear-end lack of stability has come to haunt the Mercedes team. Both of them going off circuit with rear-end twitches and the back end stepping out. A lack, and really a lack of overall grip for Bottas. Bottas entering that left-hander, which is all already quite tricky, but he just drove straight off there. And now we watch on Hamilton trying to pressurise Landon Ross, trying to make some moves back up. I'm sure the Mercedes car will be quick enough to maybe make some moves and catch back up and try his best to maybe get amongst the Red Bull cars. But look at the gap Alonso has. It is crazy. For some reason, just absolute chaos seems to follow the Road to Glory series. And this new one in 2021 is no different as we see Hamilton overtaking Landon Lando Norris, and he's up into P4 then. But the two Red Bulls very close together. Verstappen still unable to overtake Sergio Perez. So it's still Perez in second place in his first race for Red Bull Racing. Verstappen third, and Lewis is right on the heels of Verstappen straight away. That Merck, when it's working well, seems to be very, very quick. Obviously, just with the apparent issues, uh, less than ideal. And behind, you can see us as a pairing as two Ferrari cars. We're actually not too far back. Like the camera at the moment, we're focusing on Hamilton. But if you look uh, back behind, Mind. We're actually not too far off Norris, and so I think we are pulling that five-second gap to Sebastian Vettel. Add some confirmation here, lap number 12 then, two laps to go in this Grand Prix, and the gap is 5.9, so six seconds the gap. So if we finish like this, we will finish up in P7 then, uh, and actually be ahead of Vettel and the likes of Ricardo as well. But we're gaining on Leclerc, look at the speed here, oh my god, where does this straight line speed come from with DRS? So where was this speed when we were trying to overtake Vettel earlier, huh? But we've we done the job, we've overtaken Leclerc, even with a screen freeze for good measure on the exit into turn two. And we've got our teammate, probably a bit futile because we've got the five second time penalty to deal with. And oh, we lose the back end and we're almost crashed into Leclerc. We've held the car and we're still going now in a straight line. But oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. We really are flirting with becoming the spinning meme already in episode one. We've not done the full spin yet. So none of you can ban to me in the comments about you know what yet. You can't use that word yet in the comments. We've not done a full spin. We've only had some half ones we caught it but that is actually quite annoying because on the last lap then I'm actually pushing hard we're on low fuel but I need to kind of use rich mix and lean mixture at the same time in certain areas to make sure we can pull the gap because we've actually now got lower than five seconds to Sebastian Vettel so that, that that fighting was really just not needed actually in hindsight but if you look closely on the top left there 5.2 so we're back in the five second region so we are going to finish where we are then as long as we just keep on I literally we look like a horse and carriage Leclerc pulling me along with DRS there, and it's all go- Oh, no! No! It was all going so well for the P6 and 7, and the engine's given up in our first race for Ferrari. The engine's gone pop on the last lap of the Grand Prix. Are oh, you actually get Ferrari for fuck? Congratulations then to Fernando Alonso for winning the Bahrain Grand Prix. Yeah, have, we got, have we got that right? Uh, he actually won. He, like, yeah, he, he, like, actually, actually, okay. Yeah, Fernando Alonso's won the Bahrain Grand Prix in the Alpine car. Don't know what on that that's about. Uh, d d d just run, run with it, run with it. Road to glory things. Alonso, what a man. Back to Formula One first race back, and he's won ahead of Lewis Hamilton, who we didn't see, but he actually got up into P2 then. So he re overtook both the Red Bull cars, and Perez comes home in P3. Leclerc brings Ferrari's only points then today after our engine failure with P6 there, eight points on the board. Obviously, the driver's standings are the same as the race result, but in the construct is then that performance puts us in P5 ahead of the Aston Martin team which is quite positive 
I guess, uh, considering where they were in 2020. But seeing Alpine right up there in P2, Mercedes down in P3, a little bit close to McLaren in terms of points there. It's a, it's a real missed opportunity, and we're still, you can definitely see as it was in, in series gone by in the road to glory. It's, it's less of a road. It's more like a cross-country highway, and we're on like a tuk-tuk. And, and the speed limit for us only is like 10 miles per hour when everyone else is like 60. Um, and we're also getting traffic fined at like every 5 meters. But it is a road nonetheless that we are taking and that we have begun today. If you guys did enjoy this first episode of the F1 Road Score and you're looking forward to more, then be sure to smash like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formal On content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.